Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven this morning and bless the name of the Lord for the privilege to be in His presence. Celebrate Him, magnify Him, give Him glory, give Him praise. There is no one like Jesus. And blessed is the man that God chooses to approach unto Him. I thank you for the privilege of being chosen and made to be in your presence today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the redemption of my soul. Thank you for protection, preservation. Thank you for open doors on every side. Thank you for my spiritual life, Jesus. I'm here in your presence to receive of you. Let my word come true today. Get me on the path of continuous progress. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, we are in your presence today. Grant each one of us an encounter of a lifetime. Open up every close destiny by your word today. Let open destinies here open yet wider. Let no one leave this service without a story to tell. A story of your goodness and your mercy. A story of life transforming encounter. So let it be in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. I'm pleased to make this seated. Help me welcome your neighbor to your right and to your left this morning. Welcome to a new realm in Christ. Praise the Lord. Every Easter in this commission, grants God's people some unique encounters. So open your heart and get your spirit set for this special Easter Sunday service. Something unusual will break loose in your life. As Jesus rose from the dead, all the graves were opened. And all the dead came out of the grave and appeared unto many. Every destiny has been kept in obscurity. We come to the open. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please note that Operation Pray Through is on. When we engage in prayer the way we should do, is as laborious as getting on the streets. Epaphras was laboring fervently in prayers for souls to be established in the faith. Colossians 4.12 And God who sees your prayer labor in secret has vowed to reward you openly. So, engage. We also have a little publication here this morning. Testimonies of rewards from kingdom focused prayers. Why are we doing all this? To steer up the spirits of men and women, to get on key with what God is doing at every particular point in time. Because 
Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, and they are the rejoicing of my heart. Whatever Jesus has done in the life of one, by doing something, when you do the same thing, you have committed him to do that in your own life. That's why we do all that. And I pray that each one here will be a beneficiary of Operation Pray True. As you sit and stand and kneel before the Lord, pray kingdom focused prayers, kingdom advancement prayers, kingdom promotion prayers, God will keep rewarding you openly. This is very important, so this will be made available uh, after the teaching session this morning. Also, we have special Easter Sunday service, and we have amazing testimonies of the Lord of what happened as we celebrate the reenactment of the resurrection of Christ. So, please plug into this. April 10, 1982 was an awesome time in this commission. The seven prophetic pillars that made this commission were unveiled in one service. One, one service. One service, not two. We celebrated that, we celebrated that in the pastor's uh, uh, MIA special forum meeting this last week. All the seven, at various times, have found their manifestations in this commission. One was that this is, but you can't imagine, we were 63 in that meeting. 63. <laughs> it's a powerhouse come. And God said, the destiny of this age has been committed into our hands. What? Which defines a generational commission. It's still ongoing, but it's finding expression. I say it's finding expression. It's still ongoing, but it's already finding expression. That this shall be, this commission is not set to debate over doctrines, but to prove the power of the Holy Ghost. Everybody around the world knows this is a power-based ministry. We celebrate the mighty power of God in all of our services, God making himself manifest among his people. So we don't debate over doctrines here. We just demonstrate the power of God as he gives us grace. And then, this ministry is not limited to this country, but to the various nations of the world. Now, we had no footprint in Nigeria, I want to say that. We had no footprint. But today, all, all over the world, like we're saying, you can't believe our church began in uh, Egypt, and now all they are looking for is for a pastor to show up. It's all. Amen. I got to Indonesia and I found out that our books are already published in the Indonesian language. I can read it, but they showed it to me. Amen. I have on my bookshelf now books published in Chinese language that are going all over China, blessing the people of God. Everything coming on one after the other in his own time. You can time God. Our times are in his hand. But he makes all things beautiful in his time. Now, hear what the Lord said. That you'll be speaking at one spot and it will be on the screen across the nations of the earth. 19... 82, there was no internet technology anywhere around here. Or any part of the world, for that matter. Has it happened or not? This service today, there will not be less than a hundred nations who have done to this now. As we are here. In fulfillment of God's word. And then, I saw wings flying. And I said, what are these, my Lord? He said, these are aircrafts. With you inside, 
bearing the everlasting gospel to the hidden nations of the world. Yeah, what? Crumbs. Well, they didn't have to budget for it. Man, God is up to anything he says. God is up to what? He's up to anything he says. God is up to... So if any prophet... Well, I'm saying this is this. If any prophetic word has gone in your direction, only you can say to throw it away. It's as real as God is real. How dare you? Now, there was only one Volkswagen Beetle in that meeting. We were eating with plastic spoons and plastic plates. Then came the big bang. In one meeting, one meeting, one meeting. At the base of this ministry, a tabernacle shall be built that will seat 50,000 people. But many people left home because this is it's getting too mad. Many left. Where will 50,000 people gather in the world? Who will build it? Where will you get the money to build it? All these coming to pass by the mighty hand of God. Whatever he says, his hand is what performs it. I'm not cajoling you. I've never lied to you once in my life. If God says by his word that your path is ordained for continuous progress, that's what he means. You'll never be stagnated anymore. Hear this? We had no typewriter. And he said, the printing press of this ministry shall operate at an industrial scale. What? This multi-million billion store was manufactured for us. We didn't buy on the market. Fresh from the factory. Even the building alone. And we don't do one business than kingdom business. When God says it, God means it. Whatever God says is what He will and can do if you believe Him. I pray that no one will play down on prophetic treasure, treasures anymore. Now, we never had a budget for aircraft when he bought us one. We never had a budget for faith tabernacle. It was given in, March, in September. We were in the third quarter of our budget for the year. So it wasn't part. The whole thing you see today is an extra budget here. For we couldn't, we had no resources, we had no power to embark on it, but because we believe God. Please don't pursue prophecies. Pursue God. All these things happen by pursuing God. We never pray one prayer in this world to buy an aircraft. We never pray one prayer for this building to be up. No. September 17th, he declared that by September 18th, 1999, he would dedicate this sanctuary. And he did. Don't pursue prophecies. Pursue God. We just can't be there. Just serving God. And going after his core business on the earth. The business of seeing people saved, seeing them established in the faith. And then all these things began to unfold one after the other on their own. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things that pertain to your life as contained in this world shall continue to be added to you without pressure. Now, this is your season. <laughs> Behind all the happenings in this church is the mystery of Matthew 6.33. Behind it all is the mystery of Matthew 6.33. And many people in this church are practical testimonies of the reality of Matthew 6.33.
continue to pursue after the heart of God, and all that pertains to you will keep coming your way without any stress on your life. So shall it be. Understanding the laws of the Spirit, or the laws of success, We don't belong to a lawless kingdom. There is no lawless kingdom on the earth. As you journey from one nation to another, you have left the laws of your previous nation to enter into the laws of the new nation. If you don't, if you ever think there's a lawless citizen in life, you become a victim of life. So also is the kingdom of God. We are translated from the kingdom of darkness. Colossians 1.13 into the kingdom of his own dear son. So it's from one kingdom to another. And every kingdom is guarded by laws. Every kingdom is guarded by laws. So we are set free from the law of sin and death. As we begin to engage the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. So nobody can be free from the law of sin and death until he begins to engage with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So he's engaging the laws of scriptures. Because the word has spoken to you, Jesus said, they are spirits and they are life. It's by engaging the laws of scriptures that we become free from the law of failure and defeat, the law of frustration and stagnation, the law of sin and death, the law of sickness and disability. We overcome them as we engage the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But because these laws appear so simple to be true, many just miss their place in it. But when you do what he says for you to do, you will see him manifest himself in your life. Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. John 14, 21. And he that loves me will love of my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. It is by obeying his commandments that we provoke his manifestations in our lives. In this great year of dominion, you will see the raw manifestations of God in your life beyond all you may have ever seen in your life. Just connect. Just connect. Spiritual laws are ever higher than all natural and scientific laws. Isaiah 55 verse 8, my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. My ways are far above your ways. My thoughts are far above your thoughts. So when we engage the ways of God, or the laws of God, it shows us far about those who are engaging the laws of nature or the laws of science. Otherwise, by the law of the fear of the Lord as a way of life, Joseph, from the house of Potiphar to the prison and then to the palace, by the law of the fear of God, you keep changing upwards. You keep changing levels. He said, but I fear God. And you can't fear God and not know. Genesis 42 verse 18. This do and live for I fear God. And we all know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you find 
Joseph exploding in wisdom. It's not in me, he said to Pharaoh. The Lord himself, who is at work in me, will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said, can we find such a man as this is? <laughs> there is no man as discreet as you are. No man as discreet, discreet and wise as you are. By the fear of God, he became wiser than all the men of Egypt. Very simple law that don't seem to connect. And then we saw Daniel will not defile said, with the king's rich me. And they became ten times better than all the magicians, all astrologers that were in the realm of Babylon. All. By the fear of the Lord. And then we had a testimony from the wife of the king. There's a man in thy kingdom. Daniel 5.11 In whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost and in the days of their father light and understanding and wisdom. Like the wisdom of the gods was in him. How did they get there? How did they get there? By engaging the law of the fear of the Lord. He was preferred above all the presidents because an excellent spirit was in him. But he would rather die in the den of the lions than bow to a graven image. Than pray to a human God. Paul said, I fear lest by enemies as Satan beget Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the gospel. That's why putting the laws of the spirit to work can make a star of just any believer. Putting the laws of the spirit to work can make a star of any believer. This morning we are examining just one law, and it's called the law of self-discipline. You want to enjoy success in all your endeavors? The law of self-discipline is critical, must have to be engaged. In any life where anything goes, not much can anyone make out of life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 5, all the way to 17, there's an evil which I've seen under the sun as an arrow which proceeded from the ruler. He said, fully set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. I have sent servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. He that diggeth a piece shall fall into it. Whoso breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite him. That means some covenant must have been broken. That's why there has been a reversal. You find servants riding on horses and princes walking on foot as servants. And he said, Whosoever the move a stone shall be hot there with you. And he that cleaver who shall be endangered thereby. If the iron be blunt and you don't sharpen the head, then you have to put in more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. You say now, let me show you the way to secure your glorious destiny. We have been redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth. But why are we on the floor? What's going on? Then he said in verse 15, he said, 
the labor of the foolish will is every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. One, we need direction. Two, we need wisdom. And three, in verse 16 and 17, he said, Woe unto thee, O Lamb, when thy king is a child, and thy prince is eat in the morning. But blessed are thou, O Lamb, when thy king is the son of the nobles, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. That's where discipline comes in. No one will ever be any more distinguished in his pursuit than his discipline. Self-discipline is simply living under self-set rules in a bid to accomplish a given task. Set self-rules. I'll be up at so and so time to do so and so thing between this time and that time and so and so thing within that other time and this time. No, just live a life under self-set rules to accomplish your pursuit in life. Not anything goes. No one ever arrives at a future that he cannot see. And no one ever arrived there without being prepared for it. You can't arrive at a future you are not prepared for. Yes, you see. Are you prepared to walk in the reality of it? And self-discipline is one of those proofs that you are set to experience the reality of the future that you see. Although we have been redeemed to reign on the earth, but indiscipline can rob any believer of his throne. Remember in Galatians chapter 4, the Bible says, And here, as long as he is a child, departed nothing from his servant, though he be Lord of all. You don't play baby to get to the throne. You take responsibility or you end up in liability. Like I said, the opposite of responsibility is not irresponsibility, it's liability. Just like nobody can write an exam for you and then you get the result. No. If you are caught, you know what means what, what that means. So every change of level in our life is as we make it happen, individually. You will never see failure again, no? You will never suffer a setback again. Just by simply coming awake to take responsibility. Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I, I am determined to make my choice for what is expedient, what is value added, not just what anybody else is doing. Those are the people that made the most of life. In 1 Corinthians 10, 23, the same thing is repeated. All things are low for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are low for me, but not all things are defined. So I have a right to make my choice where I invest my time, energy, and resources. I have the right to make the choice of where I invest my time, my energy, and my resources. Living 
under self-set rules is what we call self-discipline. You had Paul say, necessity is laid upon me, and woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Don't bring yourself under self-set rules to make the most of your life. I have not engaged in one business since Jesus called me. Why? I brought myself under necessity to make it the only thing I do all my life. I said, Jesus, should I pretend not to have had you? See that I don't succeed in any other thing I do. And you can't be a first class of the earth without being focused. If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. Somebody's catching something here. Don't live your life to chance. Don't live your life to fate. What will happen will happen. Only bad things happen like that. No great thing happen on their own. Only bad things happen on their own. All those mountains you see. They are dropping in height. Yes, little by little by little. Even Mount Everest is coming down. Little by little by little by little by little. We walked in some place in Kenya. It was once under the sea. Amen. It was once under the sea. But it's not a garden. Everything great comes by some great input of individuals. Again, my prayer is that no one will watch life drag him on, but you will give direction to your life by taking responsibility. Discipline is possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of life. I said in my book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry, I said, when your assignment becomes a task, all your senses will come alive. You are not just watching the video of your life. You are the major player in it. Otherwise, there won't be anything to watch. Possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of life. It can also be defined as operating as demanded, not as convenient. Students don't study as convenient, they study as demanded. Exam is coming tomorrow, they say your senior sister gave birth, that won't matter now. After this exam, you can greet your senior sister. Amen. <laughs> they say your brother is wedding tomorrow afternoon. Yes, when I finish the exam, I will see whether they are finished or not. As demanded, not as convenient. As demanded, not as convenient. You saw a man like Nehemiah working night and day after prayer and fasting and enjoying favor from God, got to the field, went around the place by himself in the night and all that and all that, and then got to a point where they couldn't even except to put off their clothes for worship. They were working night and day. So neither I, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 23, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes saving that everyone put them off for worship. As demanded, not as convenient. And you know what happened? Within 52 days, the wars were joined together. Within 
52 days. And by chapter 5 and verse 14, he was appointed a governor from a cop a domestic steward. Story just changed. Discipline is all about making the most of our time. Making the most of our time. And Paul became a very outstanding uh, testimony in this regard. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. Ephesians 5 and verse 16. And then you find them, it's a redeeming the time because the days are evil. Emptiness is a risk. Through idleness, a building decays. And by slaughterance of hands, a house drops through. Every empty time is an opportunity for the devil to seek residency. And when the devil enters, everything scatters. The devil will not enter your life. And Satan entered into Judas. It was spiritually empty. And he went ahead and offered his master for sale. Ended up committing suicide. Lost everything. Making the most of our time. Colossians 4, 5. He said, Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Engage your time. Don't let no devil take advantage of empty moments in your life. And you never lack great stories to tell. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every highly disciplined individual is heading for the throne. Every highly disciplined individual is heading for the throne and you are that individual. You don't put all your profits in your mouth and expect to create a future in your business. My salary here was 300 naira a month. My wife's salary was 140 naira a month. That is what that was what was practicable in our system. Because we must never exceed 30% of whatever our income is as running cost. We have kept that rule from the days of nothing. See where these rules have brought us. We have always believed a minimum 30%. I mean, 70% on investment or capital expenditure. All the missionaries that came on board, and they'll be paid. We have never paid anybody one day later than the schedule. We've never had to pray for it. Every way start today will be a beggar tomorrow. There are many wasteful believers. I don't even know what happened. You should know. Arithmetic is done in primary school, not in the university. You should know. You should know. There are many people today just telephoning and telephoning. Can you even tell the cost? Can I buy more credit? Okay, for what? How do I have a limit? I have a limit. I've always had a limit. I okay. Hello, hello, hello. Just to greet you. For what? I don't understand. There are many causes that are not necessary that people make because there is no discipline on management of resources. 
Something happened in our church, in the old church, under night. When they brought the bill, I caught the phone myself. We didn't come here to phone. So I told you, I said, you have already spent the call for next month. It's no night time. Who caught it? I caught it. But when we are starting this construction, we are 250 million in our account. That's the only way to have it. Every day, every day. There are some daily paid people who work on site and have two phones. He's not looking for any other job because he has no qualification to look for any other job anyway. But two phones. He will phone all his labor for that day. And go home empty. Now, who are you calling? What are you calling them for? I was in Landmark one day and I saw one of those recurring signs with two phones. Hello, wait a minute. Hello. I said, this one has phone all his money for the day. <laughs> all his money for the day because there is no accountability. I'm not on contract phone. I want to know what I'm phoning. Lord, come and give me a bill. And I say, wait. I know if I put so a month money there, it's finished, it's finished. I don't even have time to call. I don't have time to receive. So what's the problem? I have a defined limit for it all my life. <laughs> Those who make news, don't watch them. They spend their time making the news. For those who watch, to spend their time watching. In the name of Jesus, you will never suffer failure anymore in your life. <laughs> At 300 naira a month, that is what you must never eat. So you can't be accommodated in it. Hello? That is what you must never, never drink. Because it's not accommodated in it. In the name of Jesus, carelessness is banned in everyone's life today. Very quickly this morning, things to know. To assess your next level's heritage. Things to note. To assess your next level's heritage. Now, let me say this first and foremost. There is no ceiling on the destiny of any believer. No ceiling. No limits. The path of the justified is as a shining light that shineth more and more and more and more and more and no limits until Jesus, the perfect one, comes. You know, when the perfect comes in perfect, we go away. Jesus is that perfect one until the perfect day when the perfect one comes. So there is no ceiling on your destiny and my destiny. As you keep engaging with what guarantees next levels, you keep moving on. You just keep moving on. Until you are set above the nations of the earth. You just keep moving on. It's coming little by little, but it's coming. As you keep engaging, it's coming. It didn't give them the land all at once. But little by little and by little and by little. You don't arrive at the top overnight. You get in there little by little by little by engaging the forces of next levels in your life. Otherwise, if he said at the base of this ministry he will build a tabernacle that will see 50,000, he should have stopped our growth at 50,000. There is no ceiling. There is no ceiling on any believer's destiny. There is no ceiling on your destiny. A 
And as we behold them as in a glass, that's the word of God, we are changed from glory to glory. From glory to 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 glory. Into the same image as by the Spirit of the Lord. Until we come into the fullness of the stature of Christ unto a perfect man. I mean, that's it. So, there is no limit. Did you not hear him say, The words that I do shall ye do also, and greater words than this shall ye do? And where are we now? Where am I now in that position? There is no limit on your destiny. How many will say amen to that? How many will declare with me, there is no limit on my destiny? As I keep doing, what establishes at next level, I'll keep experiencing it. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Number two, God is committed to our continuous progress. Can I hear you say God is committed? To my continuous progress. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3, he said, You have gone around this mountain long enough, my friend. Come and tell ye not to us. You have stayed there too long. Now, Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart. This is not your race. You have stayed here too long. This place is polluted. They shall destroy with this soul destruction. Go! Move on! God is committed to our continuous progress. In the name of Jesus, no one here suffers stagnation in life again. Can I hear you say with me, God is committed? To my continuous progress. In the journey of life. Therefore, I shall never be stagnated again. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. But, following every divine instruction from scriptures is gateway to continuous progress. Following Every instruction from scriptures is gateway to continuous progress. All scriptures give an inspiration of God and its doctrines are profitable, its reproofs are profitable, its corrections are profitable. His instructions are profitable. And they are packaged so that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, decorated, and prepared unto every good work. His instructions are to furnish us, not to punish us. His instructions are to furnish us and not to punish us. God came down to me one day and said, September 4, 1987. I was in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 to 8. I was in Charlotte Hotel. I came in for a meeting here for the first quad church. He said, the tithe that Abraham paid was not his personal tithe. It was the tithe of his company. He went to war with 318 people. And they came back with his boys and he paid the tithe of all. The same way I opened the heavens over the lives of individuals. So I opened the heavens over institutions, corporations, including churches. I have never heard that in my life. I know where we were when that word came. 
And you all know where we are by trading that world. It changes people's levels supernaturally. I never read it from a book, and I think I read virtually all the books on prophecy that anybody can talk about. Then we flogged them. And then our levels began to change. And change and change and change. If we pull our resources off the financial system, it will show in this nation. In this nation. We have been operating on an open heaven ever since. Unimaginable projects with no limit cost. Everything that built this place, within the first four weeks, we are done with everything we call this earth. And we are going to build for 52 weeks. And yet, we never owed a dime to anybody. We never cheated any man of his pay. Yes, people did. They cheated him, not me. Glory to God. And no overdraft from any man. Not for a week. Not for a day. No private consultation with any member. As loving and addicted as our people are. To the things of the kingdom. I got on that journey in 1982. On a personal note. And I know where I was when I got into it. And I know where grace has brought me to. In the name of Jesus... No instruction of scriptures and from scriptures will be bodysome to you anymore. Yeah. His commandments are not grievous. They are groomious. They make life gorgeous. They decorate destiny. They furnish destiny. Since I got instruction, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He turned everything in my life around. And that's not yesterday. Far back in 76. Don't quote instructions. Obey them. Don't write them down and put color. Don't type them and color it line by line. Green, blue. Yes, that's a very good instruction. Pass hold of instructions. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 13. If you hearken to my word and observe to do all that I command you this day, the Lord your God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Pilots are trained to follow instructions. Not arguable principles, instructions, instructions. All high flyers in the kingdom are addicted followers of instructions. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9 to 14. He said, The Lord alone did lead him, he instructed him, he guided him with the apple of his eyes, he led him about, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. And so, the eagle takes off in the air. We walk by common sense. We run by principles. But we only fly by instructions. Enjoy the instructions of scriptures. It is 75% of this content. And now, principles, great. But reproves corrections, and instructions. All of them. Put under one. Instruction. Instruction. Come on, you are wrong. That's not the way to go. Instruction. This is not the way to go. Correction. This is what you must keep doing for things to keep going well. Instructions. 
So, three over four of the content of this book is instructions. People who don't enjoy instructions don't have much to take from this book. You don't have more to take from this book. But in Jesus' name, everything about your life takes a new turn from now. This is God's ordained manual for profitable living. You want change of levels? Keep engaging with the instructions of this book and that will be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. What am I asked to, what am I to note in taking delivery of my next level's heritage? Be committed to serving God and the interest of His kingdom. Be committed to serving God and the interest of His kingdom. If they obey and serve Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. He gave them the turn example, pie till I come. Engage with this in your stewardship till I come. And the first one came and said, I made ten more talents. He said, have the authority over ten cities. Another one came and said, I made five more talents. Have the authority over five cities. So our change of level is a function of our commitment to profitable stewardship. Commitment to profitable stewardship. You'll never be stranded anymore. That's Luke 19, verse 13, and verse 17 to 19. We must continue to grow in our understanding of the world, thereby growing from faith to faith, and of course, from glory to glory. As our understanding enlarges, our faith grows. And as our faith grows from one level to another, we begin to move from one level of glory to another. Because if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. That's the way it works. So get committed to the study of the world. So as to enlarge your understanding base. And as you enlarge your understanding base, your faith grows. And as your faith grows, you begin to move from glory to glory. As you move from faith to faith, Romans 1, 17, you begin to move from glory to glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. That's the way it works. You will never be stranded again in the name of Jesus. Finally, continue to celebrate the faithfulness of God, no matter what. In everything, give thanks. That's the will of God concerning you. And when you have done the will of God, you will obtain the promise. Keep giving thanks. Although the fig tree may not blossom right now, and people are mocking you all around, continue to rejoice in the Lord that you are in this day revival. And the Lord will show up and make you feel like I speak. And get you up upon your high places. That will be your experience. Keep rejoicing. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Murmuring messes up people's cases. Complaining complicates their cases. The people complain, and God had it, and it displeased him. God had it, and it displeased him. He displeased. And when the people complain, he displeased the Lord. He had it. He displeased him. May your life not displease God. Yeah. Stop hanging around complainers. It's contagious. I said, this is so, so, so. You see, all these things have been in them. Even what they have not said, I've done it. Yet nothing's happening. You see now. Neither Momo here as the people Momo. I want the soil with the soil. First Corinthians 10 10. Avoid Momo. Avoid, compl avoid complaining. Or you'll never leave the same spot. But rather in everything give thanks. For that is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. You will never lose your next level's heritage. Yeah. Lift up your right hand everybody. Celebrate Jesus. Magnify Him. Thank Him for showing you the light. As far as your eyes can see, until you shall be given. You have seen now that your life, your destiny has no ceiling. 
you keep going up and up and up and up as you keep doing what takes people up. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering, everybody. Very quickly this morning, there are people here that need to turn their life over to Christ. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. New birth is gateway to the overcomer's world. You are here this morning, you want to say yes to Jesus. Jesus, forgive me my sins. Jesus, become the Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, grant me a new beginning. You want me to pray with you this morning to be born again, to be saved? Please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Please stand to your feet and remain standing, please. Stand to your feet and remain standing. I'll be praying for you right there in the name of Jesus. You want your sins forgiven this morning. You want to become a child of God this morning. You want your name written in the book of life this morning. You want to be free from the oppressions of the powers of darkness. You want to be transferred to the kingdom of his own dear son. Please stand to your feet. It's all for free. Jesus paid the price for all of us. Please stand to your feet and remain standing, please. Now, secondly, there are people here that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus this morning? I'd like to pray with you. You want to reconnect back with God? Please stand to your feet also. And I'll pray with you at the same time. Everybody that wants to rededicate this our life to Christ, please stand. God bless us to do. Please stand. God bless us to do. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. And God bless us to do. Everybody standing both in the first and second call, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Some church officials are there beckoning to you and I'll be praying for you on that spot. Please do that very fast. You may finish or complete your forms afterwards. Please bow your heads for prayers. Everybody standing along the eyes right now, bow your heads for prayers and lift up your right hand to the Most High God. And pray this prayer after me, saying, Lord Jesus, say it loud, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I believe. My sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I will serve you all the days of my life. And by your grace, I will make it through to heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all the assaults of the wicked one. You will never be dragged back into darkness anymore. You have sent the light to walk in the light all the days of your life. You live an overcomer's life in the name of Jesus Christ. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete those forms and pass them on to those church officials around with you and be blessed as you do. Amen. Before we partake of the communion, there are people that came in here today for the first time. I'd like to impart upon your life the blessing of this house. If today is your first time here at the Faith Tabernacle, please stand to your feet. Today is your first time here at the Faith Tabernacle, please stand to your feet for a word of blessing. Today is your first time here at the Faith Tabernacle, please stand to your feet for a word of blessing. Today is your first time here at the Faith Tabernacle. Please stand to your feet for a word of blessing. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Jesus brought you here today to be a partaker of the blessings of this house. And as I proclaim these blessings on you, it shall remain on your life forever. 
Among the blessings here are the blessings of unending testimonies. Everybody here testifies. From today, my God is turning all your trials into testimonies. This is the house of joy. From today, you will never know depression forever in your life. This is a home of breakthrough. Everybody is testifying on God's breakthrough grace in this house. From today, you will never suffer breakdowns anymore in your pursuit. It's a home of signs and wonders. And we are redeemed as signs and wonders to our world. I decree that each one of us standing here today as first time worshippers, you will begin to see the miracle working power of God in your life. Somebody said he came here March 18 for the first time in his life last year. And the week that follows, everything turned. Now, in the name of Jesus, as you dwell in this house, everything will keep turning around for your good in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. Be blessed with the blessings of this house today. As declare, beginning from now, Every grace on this commission begins to manifest in your life. Thank you, Father. And blessed be your name. May Psalm 65 verse 4 become a reality in your own experience. Beginning from now, things will start looking up in all areas of your life. So shall it be. Welcome home. This will change your story forever. Congratulations. Please complete your forms and pass them on. Shall we all rise this morning and let the stewards please take their position for the communion? Among others, the Holy Communion is ordained to empower us to live like Christ. As the living Father has sent me, Jesus said, and I live like the Father. So even he that eateth me, he shall live by me or like me. He shall live like me. Now, is there sickness in Christ? By the mercy of this communion, every sickness and disease is destroyed in your life. Can you imagine the devil oppress Christ? As you partake of this communion, no more oppressions of the wicked on your life. Can you imagine Jesus a failure? Jesus has ever seen me as my father. From now, Failure will never be identified with you anymore. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus molested by sin? As you partake of this communion, the root of sin and sinful habit is destroyed in your life. <laughs> And so shall it be. Whatever you can't imagine happen to Jesus will never be seen in your life anymore. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father. Now, whatever else you desire from the Lord, call for it right now from this communion table. Jesus, I want to be empowered to live like you according to your word. Empower me to live like you in all areas of my life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. This table is declared today the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And as you partake of it by faith, be empowered to live like Him. So shall it be. Be empowered to live like Him, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus. 
Please get seated. The choir ministers in praise as you partake of this communion. Expect instant miracles in return. Confidence in God. Return making declarations of your deliveries. Don't keep quiet and don't go there casually. Go there with faith. 